Hi, welcome to Now What with Brit and Sean. I'm Sean. And I'm Brit. On our channel for grades K to 6, we learn new things and have some fun. Woohoo! And what are we going to learn today, Brit? Today, we're going to learn all about dinosaurs. Dinosaurs are awesome! I'm so excited. What's your favorite dinosaur, Brit? My favorite dinosaur is the Brontosaurus. I really like their long necks. How about you? My favorite dinosaur is a pterodactyl. I like pterodactyls because they can fly. Well, actually, pterodactyls aren't dinosaurs. They're not? Then what are they? Even though they were around at the time of dinosaurs, they don't meet the criteria to be considered dinosaurs. They're actually considered flying reptiles, or pterosaurs. That's interesting. Then what are the criteria that make dinosaurs dinosaurs? There are four specific criteria that are needed for a creature to be considered a dinosaur. First, all dinosaurs lived between 250 to 65 million years ago. Second, all dinosaurs lived on land. That eliminates marine life, as well as flying reptiles, like the pterodactyl. Third, all dinosaurs had straight legs tucked underneath their bodies. And lastly, all dinosaurs were reptiles. Wow! I always thought all the creatures from dinosaur times were dinosaurs, and that whether they lived on land, in water, or flew through the sky just meant that they were a different type. Well, you're right about there being different types of dinosaurs, but they're not grouped by where they live. Well, then how are they grouped? There are two main types of dinosaurs. The most important difference between them is the shape of their hip joints. Dinosaurs with pelvic hips, like lizards, are called Cerischia. Cerischia include theropods and sauropods. Theropods are the only meat-eating group of dinosaurs. They had powerful legs and short arms, like the Tyrannosaurus rex and Allosaurus. Sauropods are large herbivores. They walked on all four feet, had small heads, and had long necks and tails, like the Brontosaurus and Diplodocus. The second main group of dinosaurs had hip bones more like birds. They're called Ornithischia. They include Thyreophorans and Sauropods. Thyreophorans looked like they had rows of body armor, like the Stegosaurus or Euoplocephalus. Sauropods had a thick layer of enamel on the inside of their lower teeth. Over time, their teeth would develop sharp ridges that allowed them to break down tougher plant foods than all other dinosaurs. Examples are the Triceratops and Parasaurolophus. Wow, there are so many cool and different types of dinosaurs out there. We should go check some out. Hmm, we've never gone back in time before. I'm not even sure we can. I thought you might say that. That's why I created Temporal Displacement Flux Capacitor Gloves. You made what? Temporal Displacement Flux Capacitor Gloves. I figured if we could create a snap loud enough to generate 1.21 gigawatts, we could actually... Or you could just do that. Where are we anyways? I mean, when are we? Well, Sean, we're somewhere between 164 and 145 million years ago, in the late Jurassic period. Oh look, there are a couple of apotosauruses. A pot of what? Apatosauruses. These dinosaurs are some of the largest animals to ever live on Earth. They're about 75 feet long and weigh 50,000 pounds. Look out, we might be trampled. Hey, Sean, where are you? I'm up here. Woohoo! These things are fun. Woohoo! Woohoo! Well, this guy looks friendly. This is a Stegosaurus. They're about the size of a bus, but their brains are about the size of a ping pong ball. They use their tails as a defense. Look out! Jump! That was close. Let's get out of here. Agreed. I know that dinosaur. That's a T-Rex. It's actually an Allosaurus. Regardless, I think it wants a treat. Careful, it's a meat eater. Don't worry, I know what I'm doing. Come here, Al. Come here, Al. Ah! Dinosaurs are super dangerous. I think I prefer hanging out with flying reptiles like pterodactyls. Well, Sean, I hate to break it to you, but like dinosaurs, giant flying reptiles like pterodactyls are also extinct. True, but I think I know a way to bring pterodactyls back to life. How? I'll show you. For this activity, you're going to need one piece of construction paper, a small piece of white paper, a glue stick, 
a black marker, and a pair of scissors. First thing we're going to do is we're going to fold our paper across and make a large triangle. Next we're going to cut off the excess paper. And we're going to put this paper to the side because we're going to use this later. Next we're going to cut down the middle of what we have left of a square now. It looks like it's a square and there is a crease down the middle and we're going to cut down the middle. Now we have two triangles. And now we're going to fold both of these triangles end over end. One triangle that we folded, we're going to keep like that. The other triangle, we are going to cut again down the middle. Next, we're going to take that piece of paper that we had that was discarded or was cut off the larger triangle, and we're going to Again, make a small little triangle here. And then we're going to cut off the extra. And the reason why I really like this activity is that we don't waste any paper, so we're going to keep this for later. So now, what we have is, we should have a large triangle that has been folded in half. This is going to be the body of your pterodactyl. We have two triangles that were originally also folded in half and now have been cut and these are going to be your wings for your pterodactyl and then you have the small folded over triangle which is going to be the head of your pterodactyl. So first we're going to open up our body and we're going to glue the wings on the inside. gluing the wings you want to make sure that it's kind of in the middle of the triangle you don't want to go past the the fold in the middle and you want to make sure there's enough glue that it sticks and then you're going to try your best to put the wing on exactly the same place but the opposite side of that folded triangle or the pterodactyl's body And you can always check by folding in half and you can readjust them before the glue dries to make sure that they are in the same place. So now you should have your two triangles glued on either side of your folded larger triangle. Next we're going to take the square which is also when folded in half a triangle and we're going to glue it onto the end of our triangle. Now when you're doing that you want to close you want to do it on not the end that opens but you want to do it on the end that is closed here. So we're just going to add some glue here and some glue here and we're just going to pinch onto the corner like so. Now you have your head of your pterodactyl. Next we're going to take the leftover piece of paper, the only piece of paper we actually have left over from all of our folds and our cuts, 
and we're gonna fold that in half. These are actually going to be the levers that control the wings of our pterodactyl. You should have two pieces like so. And what we're going to do is we're going to fold the top end you should try to make them about the same size, so that way they, they meet each other at the bottom. I'm going to fold them like this, and then we're going to attach them to our wings on the outside. Now these are what we're going to be using to pull the wings down. Now you don't want to put them at the bottom of the wing, because if you do that it won't actually have enough leverage to pull the wing down, and you don't want to pull it on the top because you will not be able to reach the, uh, the levers to pull them down. So what we're going to do is we're going to glue them around the center of the wing. And we're going to do the exact same thing on the other side. And now that the main construction of our pterodactyl is complete, you might want to wait for the glue to dry though before you start pulling it because it might actually pull off um, if it's not dry yet. So I would let it sit for maybe about five to ten minutes. But while we're waiting anyways, we can actually jazz up our pterodactyl and make it look more like a pterodactyl. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take that small piece of white paper that I had and I'm going to cut some circles. And the circles are going to act as my eyeballs for my pterodactyl. You can always buy uh, googly eyes from a craft store, but you don't have to bother. You can always make your own kind of googly eye by just cutting out some white paper and we're going to glue it. We're going to glue it around the center, maybe close to the back, but more mostly the center of our head. And we're going to do the exact same thing on the other side. And then we're going to take the marker and we're going to draw a pupil in the middle. So it kind of looks like a, an eyeball. And then we're going to take the marker and we're going to make a little smiley face. My, my pterodactyl is friendly so you can make yours angry if you want. Put frowns and put eyebrows to make it look angry but I'm just going to have a nice smile on mine. He's in a good mood because he has now been created and he is now able to fly through the skies with his other pterosaur buddies. And there you go. There is your flying reptile, pterosaur, or pterodactyl. That was awesome. I made one too. Can I see it? Sure. My pterodactyl's blue. That looks awesome. Thanks! Now what? If you want to learn more about dinosaurs and flying reptiles, look in the description below the video for links to more resources. If you had fun with us today, remember to like the video and subscribe to our channel so we can have more fun together. See, See you next time! time.